So before we get into filtering out the point cloud and just making it a less dense point cloud, we're going to actually take a look at creating um, a mesh. And before we do that, actually, we're going to save because it's probably a good idea. So we can take this and we can turn it into a mesh. And again, it's just we're going to go to workflow and we're going to go to build mesh. And now that we have this, um, again, you can kind of specify the source data, for instance, dense cloud, for instance, uh, depth, depth maps uh, is typically what I do, but let's see, there we go. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so just to recap what I did there, because I, I was actually trying to figure something out. Um, when I went to go build the mesh, uh, there was the source data is either the depth map or the dense cloud. And because I just made some changes with the dense cloud, I thought it'd be valuable to create the mesh using the uh, dense cloud as opposed to just the default, which is the uh, depth map. Um, this is something that you should probably just play with and figure out, but I, I think, I mean, a good rule of thumb is if you've been deleting things out of your point cloud and that's what you want your mesh to look like, then that's probably how you should uh, approach it. But anyway, here's the mesh now. And again, this is kind of like, this is like the intermediary step because we're actually gonna then build textures over top of this. I'm just gonna right click this and click center view so it stops like, uh, just, so it, just so it orients around it a bit better. So that was the, uh, that's the intermediary step. And again, the next step to this is to build the texture. So we're gonna go back to workflow and then we can go to build texture. I really haven't played with any of this. This is all pretty good. Um, any of that is fine as well. We can press okay and we'll just sit tight again. And this is part of the process is just like waiting for these things to uh, compute. And again, it's very contingent on your processing power of your computer. Um, you can enable your GPU in the settings um, or make sure your GPU is enabled in the settings. I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, cause I don't think, I'm not sure if it is by default, but you know, using your GPU, if you have a powerful one, will rapidly expedite this process. Okay. So the texture generation just finished and we're going to go over to here again, and, uh, the model shaded view. Again, this is just how you alternate between different, uh, point clouds. So here's your light point cloud, your dense point cloud. There's your regular shaded view. You can also just do model, model solid view to get an idea of what's going on. But we're now going to look at model textured view and see what it looks like. And so you can see now it's kind of taken the images from our photogrammetry and actually overlaid them. So we're getting much crisper imagery in our texture just to compare between the two. Pretty good, right? So those are the sort of file formats that, um, you know, that we might have an interest in in this class um, or just for this exercise. There's tons more that you can do for satellites, satellite imagery and stuff like that, or drone photography, but I frankly haven't had the time to um, get too familiar with that. But anyway, so again, we've just gone through different, the light point cloud, the dense point cloud, um, and different forms of, of mesh. And we can even look at the wireframe. And now we can start to see um, the next step because we'll start to see that this is actually a pretty dense mesh. And we're going to have to, uh, no matter what file format we're in, we're going to want to reduce this to make it so it's able to go online. And so that's what we're going to look at next.